So, Eric, um, I am uh, scrolling through uh, YouTube, as I uh, often do, uh, looking for what the uh, the latest um, the um, uh, the folks on Fox News are saying. And I have noticed as of late, uh, maybe, you know, the last, I don't know, maybe six to 12 months uh, that a strange phenomenon has been taking place uh, inside of Tucker Carlson, or at least um, that is uh, it manifesting it outside of Tucker Carlson. Um, the Some of it I just wrote off to... Uh, Trumpism. Uh, Donald Trump, as you know, uh, at least made some, um, I guess, uh, uh, tiny nods to economic populism over the course of his campaign. Uh, to the extent that he did, he hasn't really carried through on that stuff. But Tucker Carlson um, is the uh, heir to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Swanson frozen dinner um, uh, fortune. Uh, he is not someone that I have associated with the um, working class, yet as of late, he has been uh, saying things that have been um, sort of, uh, you know, surprising for for Tucker Carlson. Um, and, 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 and certainly I'm not the only one to notice. A lot of people uh, wrote about this. You wrote about uh, not only uh, Tucker Carlson. Uh, what he had to say, but also those who critiqued him from the um, from the right, I guess. Um, but but first, um, wh what is it that Tucker Carlson has been saying as of late? And I think in particular, there was one 15 minute uh, segment he did on his show where he talked about the um, the problems with free market capitalism in the way that it's impacting American families. Uh, it, w what did he say exactly? Yeah, so Tucker, for a while now, actually, he had this book last year, Ship of Fools, which elaborated the argument. For a while, he's been putting out the most intellectually coherent version of what early primary Trumpism seems like it could be, sort of. He's doing what Steve Bannon would do if, if he had, you know, hadn't killed quite so many brain cells with cocaine or whatever. You know, it, it's sort of a, a sophisticated and in, 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 in some places insightful um, argument for the ways that a worship of markets uh, and a prioritization uh, of markets above all other values has actually undermined uh the kinds of cultural, social, and family values that, that really motivate the Republican base. So in his monologue, which was inspired partially by Mitt Romney's condemnation of uh, Donald Trump, Carlson um, said that, you know, uh, that basically a huge part of the reason why families are breaking down in rural America um, why we're seeing in rural America today a lot of the same problems that we saw in Detroit and Newark 30 years ago with rampant drug abuse, single mothers, breakdown of family, permanently unemployed people. You know, conservatives used to say this was all about big government, and, you know, that's part of the story, sure. But now we're seeing it in white rural America, and it's clear that part of the answer here is that uh, manufacturing jobs were outsourced, mail wages declined, um, and that uh, you have just a, a crisis of uh, blue-collar working-class employment and low wages, and that um, contrary to traditional conservative rhetoric, it is not the case simply that, uh, that culture determines economics, uh, that so long as you get married, you will have uh, and, and do the right thing, you will have an economically successful life but rather that under certain economic conditions, it actually becomes harder to form a family and harder to have uh, a, a make the right decisions personally, um, and that this is a problem that, that conservatives must take seriously. And uh, sort of his, his flourish was that, you know, uh, market capitalism is not a religion. Um, human beings aren't meant to serve markets. Markets should serve human beings. And that if our economic system is not helping families stay together and is not, uh, you know, keeping our nation 
happy and united and, uh, you know, preventing the outbreak of identity politics and keeping immigrants out of the country. If these things are, are, are not what market capitalism has to offer, then we should uh, change our economic system. Now, there's a lot there that uh, I agree with. I mean, particularly, you know, uh, the, you know, the first parts and the um, uh, I think, you know, uh, from a um, from a, uh, a leftist uh, perspective, the um, it is helpful that a guy like Tucker Carlson is dispelling the notion that um, there is a culture, a specific culture that breeds poverty. Um, I think that's uh, rather helpful and that there are sort of material um, realities that uh, create poverty. And um, it's a where where along that trajectory does he go off the rails a bit or do you perceive, you know, or or or, or are we not right. there yet? Well, I mean, it, it sort of well, it sort uh, of starts to, to I mean, and, and or I should say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where does he go off the rails? And and give me a sense of what you think is his. Uh, well, yeah. Let's just answer that one for now. Sure. Well, so his his narrative is uh, inflected with you know all these uh, culture war grievances that he weds and threads in uh, with his economic narrative. And so when he's talking about when he's blaming. Um, outsourcing, and he doesn't say unions, but some mysterious force made it so that blue-collar jobs don't pay good anymore. And he knows it has something to do with capitalism, but he doesn't say exactly what. But when he's framing that argument, he says specifically, uh, you know, here's the problem, male wages declined. Manufacturing a male-dominated industry all but disappeared over the course of a generation, and all that remained in these places were the schools, the hospitals, traditional employers of women. Um, and because of this, before you applaud this as a victory for feminism, he says, uh, consider the effects that when women earn more than men, they don't uh, they don't want to marry men who, who earn less than them. And now that women are doing better economically, they're not marrying men. And so family breakdown is rooted in economics, but it's also rooted in feminism. Um, and so, you know, if you're not with Tucker on the sort of anti-capitalist stuff, then you'll follow along with him on the misogynist stuff. So he, he, he makes sure to give a little bit of a, a, a cultural, culture war, conservative reactionary grievance flavor to, to all of his economic uh, critiques. I mean, that is, um, I mean, that and that is, starts to give away a bit of um, the game, doesn't it there? Uh, the, um, the, the idea that what is being undercut is not the... Um, he, that that's the way that he prevents this from coming into some type of like class consciousness uh, in, in a in a meaningful way, right? That he is uh, this critique is not a function of we're creating um, uh, or or uh, perpetuating an underclass. It is that we are undermining classic traditional. And uh, um, I think, you know, I could even be uh, the, we could have language that was even a little more anachronistic, um, uh, uh, you know, family structure. All right. Well, Eric, let, let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk uh, I want to talk about more about what game Tucker Carlson is playing. And I want to game it out um, because I think. There's a lot of people I know who are listening to what Tucker is saying, and they're saying, you know, I, I subscribe to a, a lot of that. Uh, this is encouraging. Maybe we're moving in the right direction. But in some respects, the, we are uh, if we follow the trajectory that Tucker Carlson is espousing, it takes us back um, uh, uh, literally 50, 60 years. Um, we got to take a quick break. I'll be right back with Eric Levitz after this. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio.